Good day everyone. We will continue our lecture series on human rights based education for criminology students and law enforcers by discussing part 3 of this series entitled Use of Force Continuum. Police officers and law enforcement officers and even armed forces are governed by the use of force rules or the rules on engagement. So, when can a police officer use his firearm? When can a police officer just be allowed to use his bare hands to, to address or to suppress the threat against him? Can a police officer use his firearm to kill or to shoot to kill a suspect who has punched him uh, on the face? So, we'll answer that later. So, use of force is a continuum, a continuum, because there are many levels to it. There's level 1 up to level 7, so it's a continuum. So, so it's, it has levels, or just like a stair, from level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, from the lowest, uh, lowest, use of, uh, lowest level of force, up to the highest or level. So, I'll we'll discuss it. Does not all force against you or attacks against you, like verbal attacks, demands uh, uh, a lethal force. So let's discuss it. Level 1, when the suspect is cooperative. So if the suspect is cooperative, you should not kill him or you should not shoot him. Even if the suspect is wanted for murder. The suspect has killed your chief of police and other a lot of 20 police officers. And then you have seen the suspect walking on the street and approach him, but he is cooperative, wants to surrender. Do not shoot him to, to kill. He is cooperative. So if he is cooperative, he is unarmed and cooperative, does not pose a threat. You have sense that he has no firearm, he is clean. Do not shoot him right away. So the use of force continuum, uh, just your physical presence. Then authorized force level, just verbal commands. Just use verbal commands. Use of lethal and even non-lethal force like using baton or truncheon is not authorized. Next, how about your language and defensive posture? You should use polite language. And normal ready stance. What is normal ready stance? Just like this. There is eye contact, just like this, the police officer. And the hands on the side or loosely clasped in front of your belt. Look at the hand, the left hand. While talking, uh, the right hand could be also be touching here. No, the, the, the left hand is clasped, clasped on the belt uh, with eye contact, with eye contact. So just like this. And the stance is that the, the firearm, if there is a firearm here on the right, should be farther from the suspect or the one you are conversing. Just like this. It's a normal ready stance. Uh, left foot forward a little bit and right foot uh, backward a little. So this is the normal ready stance. If the suspect is cooperative, so do not shoot him right away. Again, even if the suspect is wanted for killing 20 police officers, your colleagues in the police station, but then you have seen him in the street, he surrenders, he is very cooperative, unarmed, then do not kill him, do not shoot him, just like this. Next, level 2. What if the suspect is resistant, but the, the resistance is passive? What does this mean? Passive resistance. The resistance is not an attack against you, but he is uncooperative, unarmed, just like shouting, angry, or uh, using foul language, or uh, just lying on the floor. So, this, uh, lying on the floor or punching. There were, I, I've seen a news. Uh, I've seen a news. He, he was apprehended. Uh, he was apprehended in Indonesia, Indonesia or Malaysia or somewhere over there. Then he was apprehended, flagged down by police officers 
he had no license, no helmet, no registration. What did he do? He kicked, he punched his motorcycle. So if there is like that, then do not shoot that person. He is attacking his own motorcycle. So that's passive resistance. Shouting, angry, or using foul language, but it does not pose an imminent threat. And you can see that the woman is shouting at you. Uh, slender woman without anything with her. So just your physical presence, presence may do. Then authorized force level, just verbal commands. Just use verbal commands. Do not use uh, a lethal and not even non-lethal force. If a woman is shouting at you, if you are a police officer, do not hit him with your baton or truncheon or even your firearm just to keep her shut. Keep her mouth shut. No, you cannot use that. And much worse, you cannot kill him or her. Next, your language and defensive stance. So use polite but firm language. Use directives and instructions, not shouting. Do not shout at her, him or her. If the suspect or a person is shouting at you as a police officer, do not shout. Otherwise, it will become a shouting match. So do not shout at a shouting suspect. Next, you must have a normal ready stance, just like level 1 earlier. Eye contact, increased peripheral awareness. So not only uh, just to focus on the suspect, but you can look at uh, look at around look side left you must have peripheral awareness just to be alert for potential attacks next your tips of your fingers must be lightly touching or ready to draw the non-lethal weapon so if somebody is uh, is shouting at you saying curse words uncooperative but unarmed so you uh, Normal ready stance, you hold your belt, you're clutching your belt or clasping your belt. And then, if you have your button, just be ready. The expandable button. There is an expandable button, a short button, but then it can be expanded. It can be expanded and can be used. Just, just be ready, just clasp it. But it should be non-lethal weapon. So only the button. So do not touch your firearm. So do not actuate like you are touching your firearm. And ready to draw and the person is just shout, shouting at you no do not do that so that's excessive use of force or display of force just like this one police officer is just calm the police officer is here normal ready stance and the woman is shouting at him so just like that but the, the this side if this uh, firearm this side now if you notice this side is somewhat farther compared to farther than the woman compared to the left side so that's the room normal ready stance next level three let's go to level three what if the suspect is resistant semi-active so yeah, suspect is resistant and semi-active so what does it mean the person or group is unarmed so no firearm no knife nothing just himself then acting resisting verbally may already pose a minor threat so resist resisting uh, verbally so that's just a normal shouting but just so angry so uh, soft hands you can use soft hands no? authorized soft hands method so authorized uh, force level control techniques like uh, non-lethal force or joint manipulation you can control the joints using your defense tactics or body control techniques like the pain compliance method there must be a, a little exertion of pain on a body parts so that he or she will comply to you i'll show it later then how about your language and posture so firm language with a more moderately loud voice but do not shout do not shout with a shouting suspect so it should not be a shouting match huh? so do not shout at him or her so you just use directives with a firm loud voice then cautiously approach the person 
So just be careful in approaching him and apply control techniques using only light force. So do not use control techniques or defensive techniques to maim or or to incapacitate the, incapacitate the person. That's not allowed. You might be sued for that. Then maintain eye contact, just like this one. Just like this, for example, this one left. So there's a verb. There's a verbal resistance. No, you can see here that he has no firearm. So there is a manipulation of the joints here on the hand part. So twist it. You can twist it, but do not break the arm. Do not break up. Just a little pain, so that he will comply. So this is a pain compliance technique. Other one also just like this. Just use your bare hands, bare hands, soft hands. So that's level three. When the suspect resistant and semi active an arm actively resisting and there's a minor threat next level four what if the suspect is resistant and he is active so what does it mean person is resisting physically and verbally so verbally resisting cursing you and also physically pose a when he poses a more serious threat resisting but does not directly uh, does not directly physically attack you or any person so you can use hard hands no you if if, uh, if the person break things or the person break things if he's drunk if um, he runs amok but without no fire without firearms just physical um, bare hands or feet so it's just resistant and he's active so you have you can use control or compliance techniques you can use non-lethal weapons your baton so in the philippines uh, police officers are only authorized to use batons police officers are not authorized to use taser the electric thing and the uh, pepper spray police officers are not allowed to do that but only the baton, expandable or the wooden baton. But aside from the non-lethal weapons, you can also, if you are, if you are confident, to use uh, your defense tactics, uh, defense tactics for joint manipulation and body control techniques. You can do that, but do not draw nor use firearms. So if the person is just resisting physically and verbally, just a little bit, do not use your firearm or draw your firearm because it will escalate. Uh, you might be killing the person for no reason at all so that's excessive use even if the person has punched you in the mouth and you are even if you you have fallen down on the floor you have no right to shoot the victim or the, the suspect I mean so do not draw or use your firearms just use your baton or truncheon so if resisting uh, only hit the fleshy Flashy or thick portions of the arms. So thick portions of the arms here, here, the thighs, the legs. Do not you do not hit the head. Uh, do not hit the head using the truncheon. That's excessive force. So just the flashy or the thick uh, parts. Do not hit uh, hit the neck, of course. Uh, eyes, head, temple back of the head not do that use a firm language in a loud voice and if necessary call for backup there are a lot of uh, suspects surrounding you you can call for backup so in other countries they can use the pepper spray it looks like this and they can also use taser it exerts electricity to incapacitate, uh, incapacitate the, the suspect but the police officers in the Philippines do not use this and are not allowed to use this. Only truncheon and baton, like just like this, is allowed in the Philippines. How about level five? When the suspect is assaulted and there's possible possibility for bodily harm towards you. So what does it mean? So in level five, the person or group is unarmed, so there's no firearm with the suspect. He has no firearm in himself with himself in his uh, in his possession no firearm in his possession 
but he is resisting physically or verbally and poses a more serious threat and has physically attacked you, has punched you in the mouth, has kicked you, has threatened to attack you, to punch you, you use what force? Hard hands plus police baton or other non-lethal force. So use your defensive tactics, in other words. So you can use non-lethal weapons, the baton or truncheon, and you can also use joint manipulations if you are confident that you can subdue him just using manipulations. But if not, then use your truncheon, expandable or the wooden baton. And do not draw nor use your firearm. Do not forget, even if you have been punched by the suspect, do not use your firearm. Don't, don't even draw your firearm. If it is only a fist fight, you can draw your truncheon. That's why you must familiarize yourself with the martial arts. Uh, so that you are not too reliant with your firearms. The problem I see here in the Philippines is that law, some, if not all, uh, some, only some, some police officers, or only a few of them, or some police officers are too reliant on their firearms. They are too reliant on their firearms. They do not bring expandable baton or or truncheon with them. They must do that. They must bring baton. So that in case of conflict, uh, they should not be automatically drawing their weapons because it could make the situation worse. Just like in my previous, uh, in our example, the Ragus case, uh, an armed forces are uh, retired. Uh, retired, retired, early retired armed force who, who had a mental disorder during a checkpoint in the quarantine checkpoint so Ragus had no firearms but the police found firearms afterwards and some claimed that it was planted no firearms just in the act of throwing so but the police officers the problem with that is that the police officer already drew the firearm even if he had not yet seen any weapon or he has not yet been uh, attacked by the person uh, attacked by the person still attacked by the, by the person he should have been uh, the police was aiming at the, the suspect already so that was wrong he should have been he should have only touch the firearm on the side or draw the firearm but point the firearm on the ground point the firearm on the ground not that point the firearm to the suspect but on the ground so what was the result they were dismissed by the national police commission and the pnp they were dismissed from the service next firm language use firm language you can draw your firearm so again unarmed and physically attack you and ready striking stance you use ready striking stance and if the situation escalates approach with caution and hands ready to draw firearm and call back up just like this so so use uh, force manipulation they just they use manipulation or if, uh, a baton if you look at here this police officer has still a baton on the back how about this police officer i think he has already used his baton that's why he's not holding the baton anymore and then using uh, joint manipulation so manipulating the joints to exert pain so this is pain compliance method but uh, a little severe compared to the previous examples that we had next level six what if the suspect is assaultive the suspect assaults you or attacks you for bodily harm and the suspect is armed already so in our previous examples the suspect was unarmed so from level one two three four five the suspect suspect was unarmed now is armed with blunt or edged or propelled weapons Propelled weapons like, like a bow and arrow, bow and arrow. So that's uh, 
bow and arrow or a dart or an arrow bow and arrow so that's propelled weapon or edged weapon or a stone person is carrying with him a stone threatening to throw it to you to hurt you so or blunt object baseball bat uh, a wood a wood piece of wood or edged weapon like knife bolo or sword I speak so uh, so any weapon like that so if the person or the suspect is armed with blunt edged or propelled weapons and resisting physically poses serious threat but has not yet attacked you so this is important has not yet attacked you as a police officer so just carrying the weapon and in a threatening stance so what can you use threat to use deadly force you can threaten the suspect that you will use deadly force if he will not stop so you must command him direct him to lay down the arm to lay down the weapon to lay down the stone lay down the knife or to throw away the knife to throw away the baseball bat to throw away the ball or the sword throw away the bow and arrow you can do that that you use only commensurate force you can use non-lethal weapons if you are gone if you are if you are confident in using it or you can use your firearms but in threatening stance only you should not shoot him no even if the suspect is threatening to kill you and the suspect is only holding the knife in front of you few steps from you just holding the knife you have no right to shoot him no, just holding a knife what should you do you can direct him to lay down the knife you must be in of course combat ready position for level six it must be not only striking ready position but combat ready you must be ready for a fight with his or her hand over the service firearm your arm uh, on the service firearm just touching the firearm just like this uh, on your side or, or you can draw your firearm from the holster but point the muzzle to the ground do not point the muzzle to the suspect so again the suspect is holding a knife holding a baseball bat holding a stone you should not point the weapon you can you can point the weapon on the ground and command him to lay down the knife or else you'll be forced to shoot if he or she attacks you if there is imminent attack or he's about to attack or he is already attacking you so just like this your hand over the service firearm ready to draw or you can draw your weapon but point the muzzle on the ground hmm? that is for level six when the suspect is armed with blunt edged or propelled weapon but has not yet attacked you huh? does not yet attack you so always remember that the person has not yet attacked you if the person is still about to draw the weapon you have no right you have no right to shoot even if you see the person has a firearm on the side and about to draw the firearm draw the firearm or even if the person has a bag just like the ragus case if it is really true that ragus had a firearm inside the bag but even if he has a really a firearm in the bag and he is still about he was still about to draw the firearm you have no right to shoot you have no right to shoot because drawing a firearm can be interpreted in so many ways it could be interpreted as if you're drawing it to uh, uh, drawing it or to surrender the weapon or you, you, so it's not that he draws the weapon to shoot you there are many reasons to draw a weapon but of course you must be ready just like this ready just like this so if he's 
about to draw and drawing the weapon of course you can you can aim already your weapon and then if he acts in a shooting position about to, uh, to to position in a shooting position then you can shoot next level seven assaultive or serious bodily harm or death so when a person or group is armed and has attacked you so yeah they have firearm and has shot you or is attacking you or any civilian so armed with small arms or light heavy weapons or explosives so shooting at you or the civilians or any person so you can use deadly weapon so if the person is shooting another person so, but you must be sure that that person is not a law enforcer shooting back at a suspect <laughs> you must be sure otherwise it will be a misencounter next uh, uh, you can use deadly force as I said if the suspect did not surrender again eh? if the suspect surrenders then you have no right to kill him so for example the suspect shot you you are not hit but later on the suspect surrendered he surrendered he threw his firearm he has no firearm anymore do not shoot him so he, he is surrendered but if the suspect did not surrender the police officer is authorized to use calibrated lethal force for example if the person is uh, brandishing a knife running towards you bringing a knife you can shoot him on the tile the legs just to maim not to kill not just to maim that's why you in the future you become uh, if you become law enforcers uh, you must um, practice uh, shooting you must practice shooting accurately you must be accurate in your in your skills in shooting so you can shoot to maim not shoot to kill so you, you can shoot the, the legs the thighs so do not automatically <clears throat> point the firearm <clears throat> to the center mass because that is the tendency of that is a training um, law enforcers in the Philippines they automatically when there is a conflict automatically point at the center mass of the body of the suspect that is why there are a lot of killings involved uh, police officers because that's their training so they must be trained law enforcers must be trained to shoot accurately to shoot to maim not to kill or you can call SWAT there is time or when attacked engage and suppress the threat so there, there is attack already so you can shoot when armed resistance subsides cautiously approach using tactical movements then give first first aid to bring or bring to the hospital any wounded including the suspect himself if you have shot the suspect and he is subdued already he is wounded but not yet killed so apply first aid you have the duty to apply first aid and bring him to the hospital so even if he is a suspect who shot you earlier so for example here a shooting by the police officer here and a suspect alighting from his vehicle it was a chase it was chase in the i think it was in the u.s the the mistake of the police officer was that he rode a, a police car then he he obstructed the way that the he blocked the path or this way of the suspect he embarked from his motor vehicle and then he approached the motor vehicle of the suspect this is a mistake because uh, he should have waited for his backup later on there was a backup from behind the backup should have been the one who should have approached no it is a mistake to approach the suspect from this direction so he was hit so fortunately for him he was only hit on the arm uh, on the arm but he fell down and uh, so he also hit the suspect but this this was a mistake but still if the suspect does this so you can return far or you can fire you can fire 
before the suspect shoots you. So your life is priority. So later on, the, the backup or the colleague of this officer arrived here from the back and rendered uh, first aid on him and then later on the suspect. So this one, the police officer was incorrect. He blocked up the, the, the way and then he alighted his own vehicle and then he approached the vehicle while the, the suspect alighted from his vehicle. So he had no cover. Look at this. He had no cover. He was hit. But fortunately, he was only hit on the arm. So this occurs in level 7 when the suspect is armed and has attacked you. So another one. This one brandishing. The suspect is brandishing a knife. So when the suspect is charging at the police officers uh, and he is brandishing a knife. So you can point your firearms. And then there is an imminent threat, then shoot. But you can shoot to main. So that's it. That's the part 3 of our lecture series in human rights education for criminology students and law enforcers in the Philippines. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day and God bless you.